Sigurdark Vitha in Skam. The Short Lay of Sigurd. Guthrnark Vitha I is immediately followed in the Codex Regius by a long poem which in the manuscript bears the heading Sigurdark Vitha, but which is clearly referred to in the prose link between it and Guthrnark Vitha I as the Short Lay of Sigurd. The discrepancy between this reference and the obvious length of the poem has led to many conjectures, but the explanation seems to be that the long Sigurd lay, of which the brot is presumably a part, was materially longer even than this poem. The efforts to reduce the short Sigurd lay to dimensions which would justify the appellation in comparison to other poems in the collection, either by separating it into two poems or by the rejection of many stanzas as interpolations, have been utterly inconclusive. Although there are probably several interpolated passages, and indications of omissions are not lacking, the poem as we now have it seems to be a distinct and coherent unit. From the narrative point of view, it leaves a good deal to be desired, for the reasons that the poet's object was by no means to tell a story, with which his hearers were quite familiar, but to use the narrative simply as the background for vivid and powerful characterization. The lyric element, as Mok puts out, overshadows the epic throughout, and the fact that there are frequent confusions of narrative tradition does not trouble the poet at all. The material on which the poem was based seems to have existed in both prose and verse form. The poet was almost certainly familiar with some of the other poems in the Edda collection, with poems which have since been lost, and with narrative prose traditions which never fully assume verse form. The fact that he seems to have known and used the Odruna Grotter, which can hardly have been composed before 1050, and that in any case he introduces the figure of Odrun, a relatively late addition to the story, dates the poem as late as the end of the 11th century, or even the first half of the 12th. There has been much discussion as to where it was composed, the debates centering chiefly on the reference to glaciers, stanza 8. There is something to be said in favor of Greenland as the original home of the poem. See introductory note to Atlakvitha, but the arguments for Iceland are even stronger. Norway, in this case, is practically out of the question. The narrative features of the poem are based on the German rather than the Norse elements of the story. See introductory note to Grupispa. But the poet has taken whatever material he wanted without much discrimination as to its source. By the year 1100, the story of Sigurd with its allied legends existed throughout the Norse in many and varied forms, and the poem slowly traces the uh, variants of the main story which do not appear elsewhere. Sigurdarkvitha Hinskama Of old did Sigurd the Gyuki seek, the Volsung young in battle's victor, well, he trusted the brothers twain with mighty oaths among them sworn. A maid they gave him and jewels many, Guthrun the young, the daughter of Gyuki. They drank and spake for many a day, Sigurd the young and Gyuki's sons. Thereafter went they Brynhild to woo, and so with them did Sigurd ride. The Volsung young in battle valiance himself would have had her if all he had seen. The southern hero, his naked sword, 
Fair flashing let between them lie, Nor would he come the maid to kiss. The Hunnish king in his arms ne'er held The maiden he gave to Gyuki's sons. Ill she had known knots in all her life, And not of the sorrows of men she knew. Blame she had not, nor dream she could bear it, But cruel the fates that among them came. By herself at the end of day she sat, And in open words her heart she uttered, I shall Sigurd have the hero young, In then within my arms he dies. The word I have spoken, soon shall I rue it, his wife is Guthrun, and Gunnar's am I. Ill norns set for me long desire. Oft did she go with grieving heart on the glacier's ice at even tide. When Guthrun then to her bed was gone, and the bedclothes Sigurd about her laid. Now Gyuki's child to her lover goes. And the Hunnish king with his wife is happy. Joyless am I in the mateless ever, Till cries from my heavy heart burst forth. In her wrath to battle she roused herself. Gunnar, now thou needs must loose, Lands of mine and me myself, No joy shall I have with the hero ever. Back shall I fare where first I dwelt, among the kin that come of my race, To wait there, sleeping my life away, If Sigurd's death thou shalt not dare, And best of heroes thou shalt not be. The sun shall fare with his father hence, And let not long the wolf cub live, Lighter to pay is the vengeance price, And the deed if the sun is dead. Sad was Gunnar, and bowed with grief, Deep in thought the whole day through. Yet from his heart, if was ever hid, What deed most fitting he should find? Or what thing best for him should be, Or if he should seek the Volsung to slay, For with mighty longing Sigurd he loved? Much he pondered for many an hour, Never before was the wanderer known, that a queen should thus her kingdom leave. In council then did he Hogni call, For him in truest trust he held. More than all, to me is Brynhild, Bultli's child, the best of women. My very life would I sooner lose, Than yield the love of yonder maid. Wilt thou the hero for wealth betray? Were good to have the gold of the Rhine, and all the hoard in peace to hold, and waiting fortune thus to win. Few the words of Hogni were. Us it beseems not so to do, to cleave with swords the oaths we swore, the oaths we swore in all our vows. We know no mightier men on earth. The while we fore, or the folks hold sway. And while the Hunnish hero lives, No higher kinship the world doth hold. If sons we five shall soon beget, Great, methinks, our race shall grow. Well I see whence lead the ways, too bitter far is Brynhild's hate. Gunnar spake, Guthorn to wrath, we needs must rouse, Our younger brother in rashness blind. He entered not in the oaths we swore, The oaths we swore in all our vows. It was easy to rouse the reckless one, The sword in the heart, of Sigurd stood. In vengeance the hero rose in the hall and hurled his sword at the slayer bold. At Gothorn flew the glittering steel, 
of Gram for hard from the hand of the king. The foeman cleft asunder fell, forward hands and head did sink, and legs and feet did backwards fall. Guthrun soft in her bed had slept, safe from care at Sigurd's side. She woke to find her joy had fled, in the blood of the friend of Freyr she lay. So hard she smote her hands together, that the hero rose up iron-hearted. Weep not, Guthrun, grievous tears, bride so young for thy brothers live. To me young, methinks, is my son as yet, he cannot flee from the home of his foes. Fearful and deadly, the plan they found. The council knew that now they have heeded. No sun will ride, though seven thou hast, to the thing as the sun of their sister rides. Well, I see who the ill has worked. On Brynhild alone lies the blame for all. Above all men the maiden loved me, yet false to Gunnar I ne'er was found. I kept the oaths in the kinship I swore, of his queen the lover none may call me. In a swoon she sank when Sigurd died, so hard she smote her hands together, that all the cups in the cupboard rang, and loud in the courtyard cried the geese. Then Brynhild, daughter of Burthi, laughed, only once with all her heart. When as she lay, for loud she heard the grievous wail of Gyoki's daughter. Then Gunnar, monarch of men, spake forth, Thou dost not laugh, thou lover of hate, and gladness there, or for aught of good. Why is thy face so white a hue, mother of ill, for doom thou art? A worthier woman wast thou have been, if before thine eyes we had utterly slain, if thy brother's bleeding body hast seen, and the bloody wounds that thou shouldst end. Brynhild spake, None mock me thee, Gunnar, thou hast mightily fought, but thy hatred little doth utterly heed, longer than thou, methinks, shall he live and greater in might shall he ever remain. To thee I say, and thyself thou knowest, that all these ills thou didst early shape, no bonds I knew, nor sorrow bore, and worth I had if they my brother's home. Never a husband sought I to have, before the Gyukings fair to our land. Three were the kings on steeds that came, Neither journey never there was. To the hero great my troth I gave, Who gold deck sat on Grani's back. Not like to shine was the light of his eyes, Nor like in form and face or ye. Though kingly both he seemed to be, And so to me did Arthi say, That share in our wealth I should have had. Of gold or land, if my hand I gave not, more evil yet the wealth I should yield. The gold that he in my childhood gave me, the wealth from him in my youth I had. Oft in my mind I pondered much, if still I should fight and warriors fell, brave in my burning, my brother defying, that would wide in the world be known, and sorrow for many a man would take. But the bond at last I let be made, for more the hoard I longed to have, the rings that the son of Sigmund won, no other's treasure e'er I sought. One alone of all I loved, nor changing heart I ever had, all in the end shall utterly know, when he hears I have gone on the death road hence. Never a wife of fickle will, yet to another man should yield, 
so vengeance for all my ills shall come. Up rose Gunnar, the people's ruler, and flung his arms round her neck so fair, and all who came of every kind sought to hold her with all their hearts. But box she cast, and all those came, nor from the long road let them hold her. In council then did he Hogni call, of wisdom, full great is our need. Let the warriors here in the hall come forth. Thine and mine, for the need is mighty. If haply the queen from death they may hold, till her fearful thoughts with time shall fade. Few the words of Hogni were. From the long road now shall ye hold her not, that born again she may be never. Foul she came from her mother forth, and born she was for wicked deeds, sorrow to many a man to bring. From the speaker gloomily, Gunnar turned, for the jewel bear her gems were dividing. Of all her wealth, her eyes were gazing on the bondwoman slain and the slaughterer slaves. Her burning of gold she donned, and grim was her heart ere the point of her sword had pierced it. On the pillow at last her head she laid, and wounded her plan she pondered over. Hither I will that my women come, who gold are fain from me to get, necklaces fashioned fair to catch. Shall I give and clothe the garments bright? Silent were all as she safe spake, and all together answer made. Slain are enough we seek to live, not thus thy women shall honor win. Long the women linen decked pondered, young she was and waited her words. For my sake now shall none unwilling or low to die, her life lay down, but little of gems to gleam on your limbs. Ye then shall find when forth ye fare to follow me, or of Minya's wealth. Sit now, Gunnar, for I shall speak of thy bride so fair and so fain to die. Thy ship in harbor, home thou hast not, although my life I now have lost. Thou shalt Guthrum's requite, more requite, quick than thou thinkest. Thou sadly mourns the maiden wise, who dwells with the king or her husband dead. A maid shall then the mother bear, Brighter far than the fairest day. Svanhild shall be o'er the beams of the sun. Guthrun the noble husband thou givest. Yet to many a warrior, woe will she bring. Not happily wedded she holds herself. Her shall Atli hither seek, Boothly's son and brother of mine. Well I remember how me ye treated when ye betrayed me with treacherous wiles. Lost was my joy as long as I lived. Odrun his wife thou fain wouldst win, and hotly this from thee withholds, yet in secret thriest ye twain shall love. She shall hold thee dear as I had done, Kindly fate to us had fallen. Ill to thee shall Atli bring, when he cast thee down in the din of snakes. But soon thereafter, Atli too, his life methinks as thou shalt lose, his future forged and lose, and the lives of his sons, him shall Guthrun, grim of heart, with the biting blade in his bed destroy. 
It would better beseem thy sister fair to follow her husband first in death, if counsel good to her would have given, or a heart akin to mine she had. Slowly I speak, but for my sake her life methinks she shall not lose, she shall wander over the tossing waves to her Yonak rules her father's realm. Sons to him she soon shall bear, heirs therewith of Yonak's wealth. But Svarden here, far away is sent, the child she bore her to Sigurd's brave. Bicky's word her death shall be, for dreadful the wrath of Jormunrik. So slain is all of Sigurd's race, and greater the woe of Guthrum grows. Yet one boon I beg of thee, the last of boons in my life it is. Let the pyre be built so broad in the field that the room for us all will ample be for us who slain with Sigurd Thar. With shields and carpets cover the pyre, shrouds full fair and fallen slaves, and besides the Hunish hero burn me. Beside the hero, Hunish hero there, slaves shall burn full bravely decked, two at once his head and two at his feet. A brace of hounds and a pair of hawks, for so shall all be seemly done. Yet between us lie once more the steel so keen as so it lay, when both within one bed were worn, and wedded mates by men were called. The door of the hall shall strike not the heel of the hero fair with flashing rings, if hence my following goes with him, not mean or faring forth shall be. Bond women five shall follow him, and eight of my thralls, well born are they. Children with me and mine they are, as gifts that Boothley his daughter gave. Much have I told thee, and more would say, if fate more space for speech had given. My voice grows weak, my wounds are swelling. Truth had I said, and so I die. <laughs>